Three, two, one. Here we go. And welcome everyone, and thanks for joining us today. My name is DJ, Director of Product Training. And again, thanks for taking the busy time out of your day to, to join us. Now, you might be wondering, why is a company with sports in the title running a kind of a DML or tourism-related webinar? Well, in fact, the tourism space is our second largest sector. And over the past year, through ongoing partnerships and communications with DMOs and tourism organizations, we have learned that your landscape is changing. It's been more dynamic, more challenging. There's a lot of roadblocks coming into play, whether it's for addressing the increased need for speed, delivering tailored ex experience for, experiences for new generations. We're seeing a pretty rapid shift in how destinations need to connect with their audience, maintain flexibility, and empower their teams. So whether you're working directly in the tourism space or adjacent areas, the hope is today's webinar is going to address all these shifts and on. So we're really thrilled and excited to bring together both leaders from Visit Milwaukee and Visit Salt Lake. We've been at the forefront of adapting these strategies head on. And our goal here is, is to have them provide these insights directly in terms of what's working, what challenges they're overcoming, and how they're using innovative technologies and tools like Digitech to stay effective and agile. So after today, if you're looking to improve your speed in the market, refine your audience engagement, or empower your teams internally, the hope is today's conversation you'll have really valuable takeaways that you can apply directly. Speaking of today's conversation, we're really thrilled to have Jack drive and facilitate our discussion. So Jack will pass over to you to introduce yourself and our amazing guests today. Thanks, VJ. Great intro. Uh, as always, hi to everybody out there. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. This is a, an awesome industry for us. Um, like VJ said, we've really grown to know it over the last few years. Um, but overall, I mean, it's going to be a really good discussion. We're hopefully going to talk about some things that everybody uh, can bring back to their organizations. Um, but with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to our two uh, guests to introduce themselves. So I think, Alex, if you want to go first and, and let the audience uh, know who you are, uh, we can start there. Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm with Visit Milwaukee. I'm the performance marketing manager here, and I helped onboard our team. I've been with Visit for almost five years uh, next month and super excited uh, by all of the changes and the things that we've seen you know, even in the last five years, COVID shifting the landscape so dramatically and how Digidec and other tools have helped us uh, stay in the game. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. Karen Staples and uh, I work for Visit Salt Lake here on the East Coast. I'm the managing director for East Coast Sales and our team here. And I've been in the industry for over 30 years. And I think to Alex's point about shifting, uh, one thing that we've, we came back with like a tidal wave of people needing to shift business, uh, whether that's rebooking or um, just changing dates to fit the schedule for further down the road. It's just been a crazy time for all of us. And I know one thing from all of my colleagues is, is that time is so important. So I think today, uh, your valuable time spending listening to how DigiDeck works for us because it saves tremendous time and a lot of extra steps and work for you and your colleagues in, wherever you're coming from. So, All right. So with that being said, I think we're going to jump into kind of our first topic, which is all about speed to market. So I work in sales. Um, I know this very well because the first person to to be to market or the first person to answer a bid, proposal, RFP, whatever you want to call it, typically wins the deal 25 to 35% more of the time. So this is just a, a game changer if you can do it effectively. Um, so we're going to start off with a little discussion about this. So I guess turning it over to you, Alex, what are some of the things um, that Visit Milwaukee's kind of doing to prioritize speed to market or improve speed to market for say a bid proposal i know social media is also very important so what are some things you guys are kind of doing well first and foremost uh obviously digidec is a huge help to that uh the biggest thing for us and i'm coming from more of a marketing angle but the biggest thing for us was how do we create a bid or rfp process that allows our sales team to go to move quickly to have it all there but also allows our marketing team to make the changes necessary, make the adjustments needed, update photos, 
um, around the same time this year, we had a full rebrand of Visit Milwaukee about a month out of our brand new Baird Center expansion opening. So not only did we have to redo our entire bid book for the new brand, but we also needed to then remove all of the rendering with the beautiful bid photo, the new uh, photos in our bid book. So um, how do we do that quickly, efficiently, give everyone the tools they need to make sure they have? Um, and then the, to that point, they're able to move quicker and answer those, which Karen can probably talk to more. But then we're also adjusting on our marketing side to that note about social media. Um, in the last five years since I've worked here, our Instagram has been has shifted to such a large priority for our entire marketing team. A lot of things we do go Instagram or Facebook first because that is where the new generation of traveler is looking for that travel inspiration. There's a lot of data out there about how Gen Z is actually using TikTok search to find where their next trip should be. The same thing with millennials and millennials on Instagram searching where can they find an aesthetically pleasing, a cool new photo spot and being at the forefront of that and making sure that you're posting pretty much daily, if not twice daily, getting really gorgeous imagery and video out there. That's where you're going to find yourself as an industry leader and it's because they're just looking for as quick as possible what looks good what sounds good what might give me a really cool instagram post and then they move and they keep going if they don't see it in the first five images on their search then they're moving on yeah it's so important i mean i can tell it firsthand i'm technically a millennial right on the border of gen c and you know we definitely want things right away and if we don't get our interest captured in those first few moments we're out of there. We're, we're gone. You won't hear from us. So uh, when we're, especially when we're picking maybe to visit a new place, we need our atten attention captured right away. So everything you just said uh, is very interesting. Turning it over to you, Karen, what would you uh, want to add for that same question? You know, what are some things that you guys are doing uh, to prioritize speed to market or, or help improve, I guess, how fast you guys are able to get to market, whether it's social media bid proposals? You know, well, this is going to sound like a layup for you, Jack, but truly one of the biggest things we ever did for our sales team is engage with DigiDeck. And part of that reason, just to Alex's point, is we can customize videos and images within the proposal for those targeted audiences very quickly. And they can already live in Digi. They're just being pulled over and switched out by our admins according to the audience that we're speaking to. Saves time, saves effort. Um, more importantly, the, it's customized. And that's what our clients really want to see. Did we do our homework? Do we get what they do? Are we giving them more than just an answer? It's it's all part of the process. And uh, so yeah, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm going to jump in as there's a, an awesome question. Um, maybe it was directed to Alex, but I think Kira could, could address it too since you both brought up Digideck. And the question is, is your bid process with DigiDeck automatic or do you need to take the time to create each bid? Yeah, so Karen, you merely speak a little bit. At, from the marketing end, we created what they call pre-select. So we have our master deck because we actually use uh, DigiDeck beyond just a sales tool. We also use it for our partnership department to do corporate sponsorships and those types of things. And we use it for our marketing uh, department to give presentations and uh, sales decks on the marketing end. So for us, the best way that we found it works is creating a giant master deck with every slide under the moon. And then we create pre-selects. So a, um, a sales person, as they're getting ready for an RFP, goes in, selects a pre-select, whether that's for Sports Milwaukee as we do it with Sports Division, or for Visit Milwaukee, it auto brands everything for them. And then all they have to do is sort of delete or tweak slides to their liking. Yeah, it's a great that's Yeah, a great and way. just to go a little further into that, VJ, because I think if that's coming from a salesperson, um, and just for everybody on the call, we can't see who's here and we can't see who the question is coming from. So we're trying our best to uh, answer. But I will say the master deck exists, but of course, again, it's customization because in the bid process, You've got to have your executive summary and you've got to import your um, hotel blocks and everything else that makes up a bid. And those are specific for the client. But those are the only things that are being touched. The master deck can exist. So you're not creating this huge proposal every time. But the other beautiful thing about the master deck is, is they have a global change feature. 
and you can go to the master deck, update your airlines, update whatever it is that needs to be updated. Could be something at the convention center, uh, work rules, whatever. And then it updates everybody in real time's proposal. So if you sent a proposal last week, but you've had an update in something that's on the master deck, let's just take airlines, for example, and it could be a reduced or an increase or whatever. When you update that and they go back into that deck, they will see the real time information. And uh, that's unbelievable. That's definitely a key perk. And um, to what Alex mentioned too, from the ability to create presentations um, more efficiently, um, there's there's a way to templatize your presentation process. You're not having to start from scratch each time. You can either duplicate or, or templatize uh, your most frequent presentations you're creating. Yeah, being able to just, again, add in what you need to at any time, even to those presentations you've already sent out is so huge. I manage a, a team of people that are sending a ton of proposals out all the time. And it's not it's uh, not an uncommon thing for us to forget to include something in there. And just being able to go do that and have that peace of mind uh, is a total game changer and just gives the person that's on the receiving end of that presentation, bit of proposal, the best experience possible, which is what we uh, aim to provide with DigiDeck. It's not a great experience for the teams using it, but for the people on the receiving end as well. Yeah, to that note, it might not even be forgetting something. You might send the bid, it might inspire them for something else or something more they want to do. And you can go into that specific deck and add more information. Or maybe they're like, wow, I didn't realize you had a feeder district. You add in all the feeder venue information, and then you can go in and do that for just that bid. And it allows you, and then all you have to tell them to do is refresh the page. And they have a whole new bid in front of them, a whole updated or tweak based on what they're requesting or what they're. They might even be a meeting planner sending it to a client who's giving you feedback and that auto update or that instant update and gratification to that point of speed to market, being able to be like, oh, yep, it's in there. Just hit refresh. That's invaluable to our clients. And the cool part is, is it's fully customizable in the sense of where it gets pushed to. So maybe you don't want to do an update for every single presentation that you've ever sent out that has, you know, that specific slide in it. Maybe it's just a specific bid or proposal, somebody requested a specific thing, and you just want to push it to that one and that one only, that's certainly possible as well. So you have that flexibility to push to all presentations or bids or whatever you want to call it that have that content or slide that you need to change, or if you just want to do it on a singular level as well, which is uh, important to note. Again, providing good experience for person receiving and for you uh, putting it together as well. And one more comment I think will be uh, great for those that are in sales on this call today that are interested. And that is, is that as, at Visit Salt Lake, we can see all of our peers' presentations or proposals, if you will, in the DigiDeck platform. And you like that. The reason that's so important is because what did I, you may know of a specific, specific pain point that your colleague was trying to overcome. It came up at a sales meeting or you discussed it with them personally, whatever. They worked through it. They found the information and they addressed it in that proposal. And then down the road two weeks, you run into the same thing. You can go into that proposal and grab that information. It's readily available for you. And that is just tremendous. So you know where it is, you remember, or you could ask your team who worked on this specific problem or issue or pain point, whatever you want to call it, they tell you, tell you what bid they addressed it in, and then you go there and you can read and see how they addressed it. Yeah, it's a super it's a super good point. Uh, collaboration is, is essential when you're doing speed to market, right? In order to really speed up um, how, how fast you are able to go to market, you have to have effective collaboration. You have to have the tools that allow you to do it, which is uh, definitely something that, that DigiDeck excels at, just being able to, to really collaborate across departments um, and make sure that uh, you not only are getting to market fast, but that you have the right information uh, when doing so. Um, that kind of brings me to another question um, that I kind of wanted to bring up in, in this segment, and we kind of just talked about it. But, you know, what are some things that you guys take into, into consideration to make sure that speed to market doesn't come at a price, right? Because you don't want to just be the first to market just because you don't want to sacrifice quality or inaccuracy. Um, you don't want to make something that's not scalable. So what are some ways that you guys ensure 
uh, that speed to market doesn't become a net negative instead of a net positive uh, as a whole. Alex, if you want to go ahead first, sorry, I didn't mean to uh, leave it open ended there. Go ahead, go ahead. I would say that um, from outside of a Digitex standpoint, we've created a, a lot of good processes and um, safeguards around that just to make sure, for example, if we're sending out an e-blast, there's a definite time frame that we've set that um, and who needs to see what before it can go. There's even an expedited an expedited version if you're like, this came up really last minute. Creating those processes and making sure that there's more than one eye. But to that note of Digidec, what's really nice is because it's so tailored and we do have something like a master deck, um, I that for the first maybe month I required everyone to send me their bids before they went out. And that's what I was, that was the goal. But by the end of the first week, I was like, I don't need to see it anymore. I get it. They're all looking good. You aren't using weird images. You're not pulling from random places. And that's just, that's that to that point. That's what makes it so easy from a marketing standpoint, specifically the, a lot when it was PDF bids, a lot of people just for time and ease would save it on their desktop, but that might to care the point. If we had 30 flights and now we have 35 flights, that same bid book might be in it correct. Knowing that marketing is in there every day alongside sales gives both the sales team member the confidence that the information they're putting out is correct and the marketing team that things that are going out are up to brand standards. And I can just say that, um, you know, Alice comes from a marketing background and I come from the sales side. And together, when you have that working in harmony, that's a beautiful thing. And so one of the ways in which we do that is truly uh, protecting that brand through Digi. So if I were doing a proposal individually with an admin, it might come out totally differently than someone else. And we don't know what they're saying. You want to protect the brand. You want to have the same talking points. If you're doing a presentation, which very often we use the Digi deck in its um, master deck form as a presentation. And then for a proposal, we add in all the additional aspects of a proposal. But when we change them, they're all the same. So whoever is doing the presentation, whoever is speaking, they're, they're speaking the same language. We're not out there telling different stories and you need to manage your team. And so Digi or any other tool really all about technology and keeping it streamlined and keeping the message on point. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point is uh, protecting brand your brand and just maintaining brand consistency is a theme that we not only see with our tourism partners, but across almost every industry we work with. We have some people that come to our door just because they're looking to solve that issue, right? I mean, before yeah, I worked here, I, I, would, I would have the experience where, you know, I would you know, give the direction, hey, when we present this or make this type of presentation, we wanted to include X, Y, Z, and we want it to look like this. And then of course, you know, somebody that works for you is going to take that and, and they'll take that direction, but then do something completely different. Right. And then you're yeah. going, well, what are we doing? Like we're off message. <laughs> we're, we're not on the same page. Like that just can't happen. So with DigiDeck, you have flexibility to empower the team to make changes if they want to, but you can also completely lock it down too. So you can make it so that nobody could even change a font color, an image, a text, a slide at all. You have complete flexibility um, to do whatever you want. It's something that the marketing teams uh, of a lot of other industries typically come to us for is, hey, you know, we make an, and run all the content for presentations or bids or proposals or whatever it is. And, and then the sales just takes it and they change it and just reinvent the whole wheel. Like what's going on? We need a way to make sure that doesn't happen uh, so we can protect our brand. Um, and with, with Digi, it makes it, you know, really easy to do that to, uh, like I said, not only give them flexibility to make changes, but also make it so that they can't make changes. It's totally up to the uh, discussion or to the uh, organization using the, using the platform. And the, Jack, the, the amount of time it takes to make a change is so quick. I mean, it's, it's unbelievably quick, you know, and we have a standard practice. We have a number of satellite offices in, and so I would be satellite. There's other people here on the East Coast satellite, Chicago, California, so when you're sending a bid to our market, we look at it too, make sure that it's really where it needs to be. And we just have kind of an unspoken rule that uh, used to be spoken, but now it's sort of unspoken. Somebody else looks at the bid too before we hit send. And so that's just a really good 
practice. Yeah, we had a we had a couple uh, discussions before we did this webinar, and and I learned something uh, new every time. So I love just talking or talking about this topic because you know, like I said, uh, I have never worked in the tourism space myself, but listening to you guys kind of talk about this, it's it's really cool to see. Um, uh, but with that being said, I think you know we've covered this topic pretty well. Do you guys have anything else you want to add to it um, before we move on? All right. Well, that's speed to market. Um, we're going to hop over to our second takeaway, which is all about, you know, tailoring your experience or tailoring your content based on the uh, audience that's going to see it, which is, you know, very important. Um, it's it's important in, in this in this space, but it's also important in life, right? Anything that's tailored and you know that it's personalized for you is just a lot more compelling. It hits close to home and it creates a lot more of a positive reaction. So we're going to kind of talk about how DigiDeck helps you create that positive reaction uh, with anybody that's viewing a bid proposal, any type of content that you're giving them. Um, so I guess we'll lead with Alex on this one. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about um, how you guys are using DigiDeck to tailor your content um, and how, how it's kind of helping you achieve that? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, the biggest part in as part of Visit Milwaukee's rebrand, uh, a huge portion of that was making sure that everybody who comes to Milwaukee interacts with anything that we put out, whether that is social or a bid book or our website, feels like they see themselves within that content because Milwaukee is um, a unique city in the way that we celebrate with our uh, over 100 festivals every year and all of the, we celebrate individuals and we can do that and we can allow people to see themselves reflected in our content in a really authentic way. And we um, wanted to make that a very intentional process. So when when Digidec was onboarded as part of this rebrand, that part of the ability to change imagery, whether that is um, pitching to an NA group, so being able to remove all of the alcohol and photos, because while we are Brew City, Brew City means different things to other people, um, or adding to... Um, adding different individuals to represent different identities or um, ethnic backgrounds um, just to make sure that the people that are coming here see that there's a space for them here and that from a marketing standpoint was really, really important that we're not sending a bid to a group of NA individuals and every single image showing um, people out and about in the city has beer or an old fashioned or bloody berry because that's not speaking to them. That's not going to resonate with them. Whereas if they might not notice that there's no alcohol in their bid, they might think that that's every bid we put out, but they would notice if there was the first lead image was cheersing beer. They would that you it's those minute things that might hit them subconsciously, but allows them to connect with our city in a different way and know that there's more to it than what they might initially. And conversely, Salt Lake City has a reputation that, you know, it's hard to die. It's very old. Probably you guys weren't even born when it used to have, you have to be a club member to get a cocktail, but that is not the case. It's been gone for almost 20 years and you can get a beer anywhere pretty much. And um, so you'll notice in our proposal, uh, we, we purposely put a lot of people toasting or enjoying a glass of wine over dinner to sort of counter that. Uh, thought that it's difficult to get a cocktail. And so I think Alex specifically is talking about if you're working with the religious market, you don't want cocktails and uh, certain images in your proposal. And they're very easy to swap out. And uh, when I say ease, I'm emphasizing ease. It's very easy. Yeah, this is the type of thing we, we often see um, with some of our organizations, just because, you know, maybe they have a smaller team and they really need to make some of these adjustments. I mean, I know you guys are talking about the religious aspect, but smaller teams, sometimes they just don't have the time or it's too much work. But with absolutely you know, with DigiDeck, you can get the right content uploaded in like a, that central master deck, and then they can quickly make those adjustments. So even a small team now has the the time and the bandwidth to make a necessary adjustment like they're talking about here. Um, and it's a way, again, just to make you better all around, better experience for the person on the receiving end and on, on the internal end as well. You know, Jack, I think you make a really good point. You know, I, I've 30 years, I've been in the industry and 
I started with very small bureaus and they don't have the budgets that a Salt Lake or a Milwaukee has. And they may not have an admin who does all this. They may be doing all of it. And I can say, hands down, this tool would be tremendous asset to them because it's set it and forget it. But although you don't want to ever forget it because everything's, you know, moving. Um, but again, you, you set it and you just put in the pieces you need to put in it and it out the door and you're doing it all yourself. So you get very familiar with what slides are readily available to you, how you can interchange them. It's, it's for a small bureau. This is like having five admins. Yep. Just, it just makes, it just allows you to cover all your bases with a small team, um, which is really, really hard to do. Um, without a tool like this, just because it's, it's so much manual work that you know you just yeah. don't have time for, um, and, and it just it's really a game changer all the way around. Again, not even in just because I know there's a lot of people that aren't necessarily in the tourism space watching. I mean, it's a game changer all the way around. It just really um, allows you to to go above and beyond um, when normally you maybe wouldn't have been able to, um, which is obviously what what you always want to do. You always want to be your best, and you always want to put your best best foot forward, uh, regardless of the circumstances. And this really helps you achieve that. All right. Um, is there anything else? Or is there any questions, VJ? We can take a moment to pause. Is there anything that's came up that uh, maybe you want to add in discussion here, VJ? Or no, just move good. No, so then go back. <clears throat> good, uh, good time to pause. So if anyone has questions or comments or anything that you want to ask our lovely professionals today good good time to good time to do it yeah ask away for those out in the audience we um you know we kind of came up with some questions but we wanted this to to not be super scripted and, and kind of be more conversational so feel free to, to to ask questions at any time and we'll pause and uh try and uh, get into them well actually right on cue thanks jamie for for your question um, what are the most engaging slides that connect with meeting planners specifically? Ah, great question. Um, well, first of all, we didn't get into this, but with this tool, you can see where your meeting planners are spending their time in real time. You get an email the minute they open up your proposal. So it notifies you that they looked at it. So you're, you get all excited and you know, you're like, oh yay, they're looking at the proposal. Um, but the best part about it is, is if you go back to that, the stats feature shows you where they spent the most time. So like any human being, if you want something, you want it. So of course they do look at all of the bells and whistles and videos and all that, but they do not spend time there. And, um, they are already, they've already bought into when, if you're at a proposal stage, they've already bought into your branding. So all that social media work, all of the other additional marketing tools that you have created and worked so hard at and put so much money and time into have worked. So now they want the meet and the, that's where they're going. So they're going to the executive summary. They're going to the convention center uh, proposal. They're going to see it, the room block, the map, the airlines. Airlift is huge. I'm trying to think. Those are the, those are the most looked at pages. So it's it's honestly great that you brought up analytics because this is this can apply to again any industry across the board. We have people that that come to us who say, "All right, we have all these different slides, but we don't know which ones people like, actually resonate." Yeah. With people, we we have no idea which of this content actually works. So the way I would answer that question um, is to say, with something like DigiDeck. Over time, you get the historical data of which slides have been engaged with the most out of every presentation you've ever sent out. So over time, like let's say you sent out 100 presentations or bids or proposals for meeting planners. Now you could look at and see, okay, out of all those presentations, what slide was was viewed the most and for how long or which slide was, was open the most times or, or who spent the most time on that side of everything, right? So you can just really start to learn about your content, what resonates and what don't. And again, people come to our door just because they're trying to figure that out. They want those analytics, right? And it, it takes a large sample size to, to be able to determine that. But let the analytics do the talking. Let the data tell you what's resonating the best. I mean, a lot of times in presentations, people make an adjustment and they go, oh, this this sounds better. This looks better. I think this is more compelling. Well, don't rely on that. Get some data behind it, right? You got to put some stuff out in the field, see what gets interacted with the most, 
Digidac, and there's a lot of other tools, frankly, that, that can do something like that. I mean, let, let's be honest. Jack, I, I would just say uh, for the seasoned salespeople uh, in, in cities like Milwaukee and Salt Lake and Chicago and so on, uh, around the globe here, they already did their research before they engaged with this client. So they're kind of already thinking about how they're going to deliver this proposal. And they're probably even arranging the slides according to that. But what's so important is once that proposal has gone out, once you get the notification that they've opened that proposal, you can see where they spend so much time. And sometimes it's surprising. So diversity, equity, and inclusion is very important in the, the industries that we all work with. And you have to speak to that. So there's slides in there that speak to that. And you can always get sort of a flag like, oh, this is really important to this client. They spent a lot of time going through that material. So your follow-up, you're going to mention that. You're going to say, did we give you everything to tell the story that you need to hear or understand about our destination? So you want to use those analytics when you're going towards your follow-up to the pro proposal because it's telling you already what's important to them. Yeah, and this also plays on, we kind of talked about doing more uh, with a smaller team and being more efficient. So obviously based on those analytics, kind of like you said, using, you know, what they're viewing, take it even a step more downstream than that. And like, who even opened this to begin with? Because how many things do you send out that people never open, right? And you're still right. checking in with them um, and, and wasting time there when you could be focusing solely on the people that actually did engage uh, with whatever it is you sent out. Again, we see that across industries all the time. Some people are doing hundreds or 200s, 300s of these things. Uh, and they're following up with every single one and they have a small team. Why would you do that uh, when you can just focus on the people that are actually engaging with that content? That's so key uh, to being able to do more with less is spending your time where it makes sense. Um, and, and not only checking in with those people that are engaging, but kind of like Karen said, it allows you to come across so much more prepared, so much more organized because you're like a mind reader. You can call them up and say, hey, it's very clear to me that you were interested in X, Y, Z, spent the most time there. Let's have a conversation about that. Let's not talk about the 50 other things they looked at for one second. Let's talk about what they actually care about, right? That's going to be a lot more compelling no matter what you're doing across the board. All right, we'll get the slides back up here. Any more questions come in while we were, I know that was no, long. No, that was a great question, sure. Jamie. Appreciate it. And as we transition to our last talking point and takeaway, please continue to share your questions and comments. All right. So that, that's a good transition, BJ. We are going to go to our third talking point. So first we talked about speed to market, how that can be achieved, why that's important. You win a lot more if you're, if you're first to market. Then we talked about tailoring your content, why that's so important, making people get a, a positive reaction um, by doing that. And then um, we want to take it kind of a full circle and talk about how do you empower your team to achieve those things? You can't just go out and make those a priority without investing in a tool uh, that empowers them to, to improve speed to market, to tailor content more effectively and more easily. Um, so I guess with that being said, uh, we'll go with, uh, with, with Karen first here. Um, but I guess what are some ways, uh, that you guys are helping empower your team? You know, obviously you're going to say a tool like DigiDeck, but even outside of that, what are some things that you guys do as an organization to make sure that everybody's set up to succeed and able to achieve something like a speed to market or able to tailor content or, or just be successful in general? It doesn't even have to be related to those two things. Well, you know, just like anything, it's education and process. You know, you've got to put a process in place. Um, and so our team fully knows that we are 100% supported by our senior leadership. And, you know, if we have to make something happen, we're all in. But we have something unusual that most people don't have in their bureau, but we have a full media team with a media center, a half million dollar media center. So our digital library is quite comprehensive. Um, we do a lot of video. I mean, just look at YouTube. Everybody needs to look, read the room, right? Or read the technology. YouTube is unbelievable. So if you can create specific videos and, and many of them and have that library available that you can interchange with, with DigiDeck in this case, 
what a huge savings of time, but more importantly, the client is watching that. It's they're small, they're on point, and and that is is something we do. Um, I think I lost focus on what the final question was again, but that's one of the things I wanted to mention to you. Yeah, just just again uh, for Alex, I'm sure you're going to jump in here, but just again things that you're doing to empower your team to achieve speed to market, uh, yeah. to achieve. Uh, being able to tailor their content effectively, whether it's, you know, the religious market or not the religious market or this or that, you know, there's some ways um, as an organization, you're you're empowering them to achieve those two things. And then you can also take it outside of that. And just as a whole, as a mindset in the organization, what you're doing to achieve every or to help anybody from top to bottom uh, be able to be good at, at the role that they need to be doing. Yeah. Uh, in anticipation of our brand launch, so actually about a year to a year and a half before we knew we were launching a new brand. Um, a colleague and I audited uh, our server and created a staff toolkit, um, which then created a process that when the new brand launched, everyone knew where to go and get their letterhead, get their sign templates if they needed a sign, whether that's for their door that says I'm on a call or for a client that says the bathrooms are this way, um, all of our presentation templates, um, it created a it created a process in the old brand where they knew where to go for all these things. We have the best image selects. We have from everything for sports, leisure, MNC, Skylines. They're all in this toolkit. Um, and it really allowed the entire staff from HR all the way up, all the way to sales, to marketing, to be able to find these sort of everyday tools and easily use them. Um, at the onset of Digidec, we actually added a new folder called Staff Trainings, and we uploaded every single uh, BJ came and did a giant group training. We had everyone in the room, including the CEO, watching uh, the Digidec training, which to Karen's point of that support from senior leadership, when you see your CEO or your CMO or your director of sales in that meeting too, that they're learning the processes they, they were in toolkit meetings, they were in the Digidec meetings, that they're learning the process and they're supporting it. Um, but we took those vid videos because obviously new staff come on or someone who wasn't able to attend. Um, and those videos are readily available. If someone has a Digidec question, they can go back, open the videos, scrub to where is it how to change an image, is it how to make it bigger or smaller, and it just allows everybody to feel like they're in control, that they don't then have to go to the creative services team and say what's a great what's a good skyline image they could go to that spot and add a skyline image half the time it's already in a tool like that but if they needed it for something separate they can go those places they don't feel like they have to go through six different hoops and five different people to be able to find uh what they need and get to that point that speed to market it's the same thing with digidec um, it's so easy for everybody to change their own photos, to add their own slides, to tweak what they need. Even some of them have figured out how to add their clients' logos in there. And anyone who was um, a little nervous about it, there was a few uh, late adopters because they were just a little anxious. The minute they actually tried Digitech and got in there, actually it was to Karen's point, they sent their first email and got a notification right away that someone opened it and they were they were sold. They were like, this is perfect because I would have followed up with that person five times asking if they got my email. Now I know they at least got the email and opened the deck. So it begins to empower people, make their processes easier when the the whole company is invested in that process. And real quick, Alex, I think that comment hits on the question we just received. Um, and that question is, how do you make sure your investment is, is used by your team? What team is resistant to change? Sure. Yeah, I, I was in charge of onboarding everyone into Digidec, and we actually did it in waves. So we started with the marketing team knowing that typically when it, that the tool was going to be less of a use for them. It was more of that back end stuff. So we started there, got them really acquainted with it. And then we had the trainings done by Digidec, but we also did an internal training where then they could feel like they could ask any questions. It was about two weeks after they had all gotten the um, platforms that they had been in there, they'd been working around it. And then I actually went to the sales meeting about two weeks after that. So it was just staying in that touch point. And it was at that sales meeting, like two weeks after, so I bet about a month that the salesperson was like, yeah, I haven't used it yet. I just sent the PDF yesterday because they were 
they were nervous, but that continued touch point and the continued investment, not only showing the marketing's investment and the time to have me at all these separate meetings and giving um, feedback and taking feedback and adjusting things, but also that senior leadership was allowing that time in their sales meeting, that it was that important that they've got this sales meeting once a week where they actually get all their people in a room, which Karen can attest but that they used a half hour of that to talk about Digitech. It just reinforced the importance of it. And I think just staying on top of it, being available to answer questions, sort of having that point person, I think Karen mentioned an admin, like having somebody who is the master of it so that they- I was just going to say that. They can team them. They can find them at their desk. They can do what they need to do. And there isn't that nervousness of where do I go? Who do I ask? Yeah. And you know, uh, for in our world, in the tourism DMO world, um, we we made a decision a while ago when we first got Digi that we had to find a tool that we we didn't have time to police everything right that was going out, and it wasn't consistent, and and that's just not cool. So we wanted to find a tool where we transitioned everybody to the tool. There was a set date. And you have to have your champions. So your admins have to be the champions um, because that's the way it works. Otherwise, it's not going to work efficiently the way you want it to work because people are going, maybe not, they may not learn something that they need to learn on Digi because they're not the champion, but that champion knows how to do that in a nanosecond and can get it done and back to you in split time. It's a behavioral process. So not only are you learning this new technology, but you're changing behaviors. And and that's really important for a sales team to be successful. Salt Lake puts out hundreds of proposals a month. Um, this is the only way I think we would be successful in doing so. And what's nice about that is from a marketing standpoint, realistically, the hundreds of proposals a month Prior to Digitech, we didn't have eyes on either because they were PDFs that were going out. There was right. no, mm -hmm. but now if marketing ever did want to just go through and make sure everything was up to snuff, everybody does have eyes on that. So if there was, if there's a quarterly audit where even VP of sales just goes through, they can, um, our VP of sales can see everybody's proposals. You can filter by who did the proposal. You can see where it's at, who's looking at it. So there's also this transparency that happens across the company Yes, um, that's super nice because rather than the VP of sales having to message the salesperson and then wait to hear back, they can kind of just go in and look at things themselves, ask questions as needed. And same with marketing. If we noticed a photo didn't get updated that needed to get updated, we can make sure that's implemented. We don't even have to tell the sales team that it got implemented. We just updated in the master deck. We don't have to say, please delete your old PDF. Here's the new one. It's right. done. And for small teams, that's huge because if the salesperson knows it and has to put creative services and they have to change the PDF and then it sticks emails about it, it's just one one fell swoop update and it's super, for everybody, it's a lot easier. And in destinations, images are really important because images change, brands change, things change. Nothing is getting into that master deck without leadership, whether that's vice president of marketing, vice president of sales, who, whomever approving those images. So those images are approved. The information is approved. Everything in there has already been pre-approved and you're, and it just creates a seamless process. BJ, I might have one thing I want to add. Can you repeat the question one more time? I, there might be one thing I want to add as well. Yeah. Yep. The question was, how do you make sure your investment is used by your team? What if you have folks that are resistant to change? Yeah, so I, I do want to make a point just because this is, again, something, obviously, um, as the makers of the product, we, we see this very often. We, we see, you know, um, I would say, our, to be honest, our biggest failures um, are definitely when people aren't using the investment and aren't using our product. And yeah. typically when that happens, um, it's because they never, ever lean on us and they shoulder all the burden on themselves internally. Use our team. Um, we take great pride on hopping on a call anytime any of our clients need us. VJ is available. We have dedicated real life support, right? So like if you're using like a, like a PowerPoint, for example, there's no, there's nobody you can chat with or call or anything to right. get help. 
Um, <laughs> with us, you have a real live connection, a real live person that's just responsible for ensuring your success with our product. So don't shoulder all that burden uh, internally to get people to adopt it. Use us. Use the vendor that sold you the product. Don't even just apply this with, with Digidec. With any tool that you guys make a, a solid investment in, the, the organization that's selling you that tool has a responsibility, in our opinion, to make sure uh, that it's used effectively. It's not all on you guys. So, so That's lean. a beautiful thing, Jack. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, if you have Digidec and you don't use the chat button at the that is at the bottom of every single page, uh, they're super responsive. It's super easy. Every time someone would ask me a question about Digidec, I'd be like, here's how you do that. If you need a question in the future, because I know a lot of these bids are written at 10 30 at night when they're getting off a plane whatever that chat is super helpful they help they answer right away they have full view of your deck it it just makes things a lot easier and again goes back to empowering the team to be able to ask their own questions and figure things out without having to rely on people who might be out or uh in meetings on webinars those types of things. and we take it a step further than most companies because a lot of times you get support or you want to hop on a call they'll show you how to do something we will actually like, let's say you're just a, a user you're building a proposal and you need to switch out an image it's your first time using it and you don't know how to do it and you have a presentation in three minutes and you really can't uh you know wait to to watch a video or, or try and figure it out yourself our support will actually make the change that you need for you if you're in a pinch or if you just can't figure it out on your own. So it's not just a, well, here's how you do it. Here's how you, here's how you use it. Like we can actually do it for you. Uh, in a lot of cases, obviously we want you to learn how to do it on your own, but we really try and cover every base to make sure that people feel comfortable using the product, even if they don't know how to do something because they know worst case, we're going to be there to, to do it for them if we have to. And that's kind of a great segue to wrap things up and summarize our conversation and, and talking points and takeaways today. So we talked about the importance of speed to market, customizing content and tailoring it for your audience, as well as empowering your team to be able to achieve both speed and correct content each and every single time. Uh, so with that said, we just want to open the floor for any additional questions, commentary, best practices, tips, tricks. We have some great experts on the call. So I wanted to open up the, the floor for questions. As you are thinking of those questions, I'm going to share a couple of resources via our Zoom chat with everybody. Um, the first one is going to be um, some sample decks. So that way, if you want to take a look at some example um, decks via data deck, I'm going to share that via chat. And then the second resource I'll be sharing, if you are interested in pursuing a, a demo and talking with Jack and his awesome team, I'm going to share via chat our demo request form. Yep. And um, <clears throat> Jake on our, our marketing team, you may have to help me with that because I, I don't think I can message everybody. So if you don't mind uh, sharing that with the, with the audience, that'd be great. Awesome. Any questions? How can we help address questions, topics, some of the takeaways we discussed today? Yeah, it can be about anything. Uh, we will. Uh, we can go in any direction that the audience wants to go. We're happy. There's no no dumb questions. Um, ask away. We got two of the two of the premier people from the tourism space here. We'll give it 30 seconds for questions. Otherwise, we'll uh, wrap things up and give everyone some time back. But thanks for taking the time to join us. We really appreciate uh, you learn a little bit more about some of these great insights. And tricks. Again, if you're interested in pursuing a demonstration, feel free to submit a request or contact us directly. 
All right. We'll go ahead and, and shut things down. Karen, Alex, thank you both so much for joining you. It's been a really, really insightful and valuable conversation. So we appreciate your time and everyone else's too. And I will just say you have a great team. Jack, I have to say your team is fabulous. PJ, yeah. it's great. Great. We appreciate that too. Thanks for the plug. You're welcome. Hey, thank you and same to you guys. Yeah, it's uh, it's awesome to, like I said, getting, getting to work with the tourism space over the last year and you guys really are just as progressive as a lot of the pro sports teams and, and really quick to adopt technology. So it's really cool to see and, and learn more about the industry over the, over the last year. Thank you. Thanks all. Take care. Have a good day and week. Bye now. Bye.